the Eden Prairie City Council will now come to order. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on our agenda tonight is a swearing in of, council, of two council members. They're not new council members, but they were reelected this last November. And we're delighted to um, have the swearing in of council member Brad Aho and council member Ron Case. So, Mr. Uh, Rosso, you're going to do the swearing in? Yes, I will. Okay. You want we, them down there by the podium. Down there? So if you would raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, I Brad, Ajo, Brad Ajo, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the state of Minnesota. And the state of Minnesota. And faithfully for and on behalf of the citizens of Eden Prairie. And faithfully for and on behalf of the citizens of Eden Prairie. Discharge the duties of the office of city council member. Discharge the duties of city council member in the city of Eden Prairie, in the city of Eden Prairie, county of Hennepin, county of Hennepin, and the state of Minnesota, and the state of Minnesota, to the best of my judgment and ability, to the best of my judgment and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and of the State of Minnesota. And of the State of Minnesota. And faithfully for and on behalf of the citizens of Eden Prairie. And faithfully for and on behalf of the citizens of Eden Prairie. Discharge the duties of the office of City Council member. Discharge the duties of City Council member. In the city of Eden Prairie. In the city of Eden Prairie. In the county of Hennepin. In the county of Hennepin. And the state of Minnesota. And the state of Minnesota. To the best of my ability and judgment. To the best of my ability and judgment. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to both of you. And I think I can speak for all of the rest of the council by saying that I'm thrilled that you guys were reelected. You're both so dedicated to the job. You come up with great, innovative ideas. And it's just always a pleasure to work with both of you. So thank you. Happy about this. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, prior to the start of each council meeting, we have an opportunity for uh, residents to address the council on items related to city business. Generally, our council meetings are the first and third Tuesdays of each month, not always, so please look at uh, the calendar, which is on the city website. Our open podium period of time is from approximately 6.30 to 6.55, and if you wish to address the council at this time, please contact the city manager's office at 949-8412 by meeting date with your name, your phone number, and the subject matter that you wish to discuss. If there's time after scheduled speakers are through, we do allow time for people to spontaneously come up and address the council at that period of time. Uh, these portions of the meeting are not recorded or televised. Again, if you have any questions, please contact the city manager's office. We have a visit tonight, a presentation from Hennepin County Sheriff Rick Stanick. If you'd like to come forward. I would. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, and good evening, Council Members. Thank you for the very warm reception this evening. <laughs> <laughs> I know your folks uh, that are watching it live probably can't uh, tell, but uh, it is a very warm place. It's 58 so. degrees in here. <laughs> hey, uh, Madam Mayor and Council Members, thanks very much for having me out. Uh, my name is Rich Stanick. I'm the Hennepin County Sheriff. I'm currently serving uh, 10 years. In fact, my anniversary is today. 
uh, as sheriff of the county, and I absolutely love what I do day in and, and day out. Madam Mayor, thank you very much for your service on the county's uh, capital budgeting task mm -hmm. force. Great. We appreciate uh, your perspective. You've always been very helpful, very forthright. Thank you. And candid in terms of uh, some of the projects that we try and move forward to better public safety uh, countywide. And uh, council members uh, Brad Ajo and Ron Case, congratulations on your uh, re-election. It's not an easy thing to do. I know you had stiff competition, uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, you do a good job. And of course, uh, Chief Jim DeMann and the men and women who work out here in Eden Prairie. My folks from the Sheriff's Office love working with Eden Prairie Police, even changing a leadership transition from one chief to the next. And I think since serving as a sheriff of this county, this is my third uh, Eden Prairie Police Chief. It's always been uh, seamless. They do a great job, and you're lucky to have uh, the internal talent that you do to develop it and then put it in place. And for that, I admire a council that's willing to take that risk. But I think the risk is fairly safe with uh, Jim and others that may follow in his footsteps. As I said, I just want to uh, get a chance uh, every so often to come out, meet with the city councils across uh, the county, talk to them for just a few minutes, maybe no more than 10. I'm happy to take any questions if you wish. But I truly just want to tell you about some of the working relationships that we have with uh, the council and our law enforcement partners. With me tonight is Shane Myrie. Shane's a deputy with the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office. Uh, he's also a military vet uh, as well. He does our intergovernment relations for the Sheriff's Office. So whether it's working with Congress or state legislature, city councils, everybody in between, Shane's the guy that we uh, go to and help uh, foster those relationships. Okay, so I figured out how this worked. I told you a little bit about myself, uh, 33 years in law enforcement. Uh, today, and it's also my anniversary serving as a sheriff. Had a chance to serve in the state legislature, work for the governor for a couple years. Uh, my wife and I and two uh, adult kids live out in northwestern uh, Maple Grove, a little bit of a drive from Eden Prairie, but that's the fun uh, part of it. I have family members that live out here as well. Hennepin County, as you know, is about 1.2 million residents, 500 plus square miles, 104 named lakes, and three major rivers that flow through our county. We are comprised of 45 municipalities like yours and 36 other local law enforcement agencies, including eight federal law enforcement agencies that have some form of jurisdiction here in Hennepin County, as well as statewide, and we have relationships with uh, all of them. Sheriff's Office leadership is much like uh, the Eden Prairie Police Department. I've got a Chief Deputy, Mike Carlson, that runs the day-to-day -day operations, and then four majors who oversee the eight divisions of the Sheriff's Office, comprised of eight captains. So one Chief Deputy, which is the Chief of Police for our agency, the four majors, uh, the eight captains, and then so on and so forth uh, down the line. We're comprised of 800-plus uh, men and women, both sworn, non-sworn, detention personnel, and over 300 uh, volunteers who have service to uh, Hennepin County. Madam Mayor members, uh, we work uh, tirelessly on 21st century policing, those principles and protocols and practices. The best practices are put in place uh, across the country. I know you know a little bit about this from talking with uh, the chief, and we take this uh, very seriously. We embrace our role as guardians out here in the community and the different cities that we work with. Um, sheriff's office, people ask me all the time, look, what's the difference between the county sheriff's office, whether you wear a brown uniform like Shane has on, or the dark blue uniforms like the men and women out here in Eden Prairie, or maybe light blue like Minneapolis, or the maroon that uh, the Minnesota State Patrol, or green if you get stopped by a DNR conservation officer. At the end of the day, my PowerPoint went away. At the end of the day, uh, the Sheriff's Office provides eight distinct lines of uh, business. As I talked about the four majors, a captain, each of our captains oversees one of our lines of business. We define our line of business as a full service law enforcement agency, things like the jail and courts and patrol, warrant, civil process. Seven of these eight lines of business are articulated in state law mandated that these are the services the sheriff has to provide the residents of the county, whether you have a localized police department or not. And if you choose to have a local police department, that's great, we work with them, and they, you decide as elected officials of your city what level of service, additional service, protection level you want to provide your residents. If you didn't have a local police department, the sheriff's office would provide those services for you as well. For the services that your local police department provides of these eight, we defer to the local police department to provide the primary service level. Uh, if they choose not to provide that service level, then we will supplement the service as requested or according to uh, state law, and that's really as simple as it gets. 
Our adult detention vision is uh, the jail. You can see the number of bookings every year, about 33,000. Last year, when I came in 10 years ago, we were booking about 40,000 a year into the front doors of Hennepin County Jail. And then you see Eaton Prairie PD with about 384 bookings during 2015. We are nationally accredited. We spend a lot of time on mental illness, about 52% of our booking population that comes into the jail. And none of the folks in the jail are adjudicated. They're all pre-trial. Once they're adjudicated, they either go to a state prison, the county workhouse, or back out in the community on probation, as it may be. Everybody there is uh, pre-adjudication. Enforcement Services Division is located out in Brooklyn Park, uh, right on the border of Maple Grove and Brooklyn Park. You can see from our patrol unit to our water patrol, uh, warrants and civil process, special operations, we stay busy day in and day out around the county, helping local police departments, working on multi-jurisdictional task forces, working and being that, uh, that liaison between the federal law enforcement agencies as well as they work uh, across our county. Our communications division I was located out in Plymouth. We dispatch for uh, 36, 37 local communities and fire departments, of course, Eden Prairie dispatches our own. We have redundancy with your 911 dispatch facility, and we share information uh, back and forth. So if an incident happens out here, our deputies know what's happening, as well as in Bloomington and Richfield, and then, of course, uh, the sheriff's office. You can see the number of uh, 911 calls that are placed every year or answered by. Uh, Hennepin County Sheriff Dispatch, and I'm sure your chief will tell you, likewise, out here in Eden Prairie, about 75 to 80 percent of those 911 calls that come into your dispatch come in via cellular telephone, right? You get multiple calls about one incident. A volunteer services division, I talked about the 300 men and women who volunteer countywide on behalf of the sheriff's office. They're trained to a very high standard, much akin to what would be a, a sheriff's posse. They have some statutory authority limited in certain uh, situations or incidents. Uh, 120 of them are special deputies who wear a uniform like that. Another 150 plus are um, work in our jail or other services across uh, the county sheriff's office. Our forensic sciences division is the crime lab. That's our eighth line of business. That is not mandated by state law, but rather provided by the county board to the residents of Hennepin County, whether it's Eden Prairie or Bloomington or Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center, now you name it, uh, they do a very nice job. Uh, we tend to believe that uh, some of the decreases that we've seen countywide with respect to violent crime and property crime, a large part of it comes as a result of the local law enforcement agencies processing those crime scenes and then using the county crime lab to help identify and get on these cases early. Same thing with our criminal information sharing and analysis unit, what we call CISA intelligence-led policing. Now, you've heard these terms, I hope, uh, before, uh, but this is just using technology to law enforcement's uh, advantage. It's a lot of work. These guys are really good at what they do, but most of the larger crimes we see are multi-jurisdictional, right? Bad guys and bad women don't know boundaries. They cross over county to county, city to city, sometimes state to state. This is where CISA helps connect the dots and help local law enforcement agencies connect with their partner agencies uh, in a seamless uh, fashion or transition. And of course, our investigation division works uh, countywide. CISA is a member of the Southwest uh, Hennepin Crime Collaboration. Uh, we also work through the Violent Offender Task Force. And these men and women are detectives. They work really hard keeping on top of the bad things that happen uh, countywide. And they're good, at what, uh, they're good at what they do. Our drug task forces in the county have broken into five narcotics task forces. We uh, take those 45 cities, break them into five task forces, geographically based, and then we ask those task forces to work with the local elected officials, school officials, whoever it might be, and focus on things that are important in their communities, whether it's schools or communities or certain neighborhoods. And then we network them all together through CESA and our detectives, and of course, uh, the Drug Enforcement Agency through the uh, statewide task forces. Drug abuse prevention, uh, we spend a lot of time on opioid and heroin abuse. Every day, somebody in this county dies or near death as a result of opioid, heroin overdose, uh, whatever it might be. It's a real problem. It's not just here in Hennepin County. It's statewide, a national issue, uh, national epidemic. And we have collected 23 or so tons 
of uh, prescription medications over the last several years using these drop boxes across uh, Hennepin County. Now the closest one here to uh, Eden Prairie would be out in Edina over on uh, York Avenue South at the Southdale uh, Library. A professional standards division, whether it's internal affairs or training or 21st century policing, um, our community engagement team, they work on a countywide basis, so a lot of times we'll help provide services to other law enforcement agencies that are a little smaller in size, maybe than your agency out here in Eden Prairie. You get out to the northwestern part of the county and, you know, size is what it is. Some of those agencies only have half a dozen or a dozen police officers. Some of them still work on a part-time basis. But nonetheless, if their council wants to have a localized police department, we'll help them do that. Uh, but we sometimes provide additional services to those smaller agencies to get the job done. And then I talked about the uh, community engagement team. These men and women work uh, countywide. You can see they work in the Hispanic community, the African American community, Asian, uh, American Indian, and Somali. And they do a really uh, nice job. They're available countywide. And you've got a uh, robust community, diverse community, continuing to grow and thrive out here in Eden Prairie as well. And these men and women have worked out here with your law enforcement officers and the community itself on issues of uh, mutual concern. And then, Madam Mayor, members, just a little bit about uh, violent crime. You know, uh, for the first six, seven, maybe eight years of my term as sheriff, violent crime in this county went down 38%. We we're really pleased. We only counted rape, robbery, murder, aggravated assault. But then we saw a fairly significant increase, right? After eight years of significant decreases, 38% aggregate, we saw an 8% increase in violent crime. And this year, I think, as it turns out, with 2016, we will see about a 2 maybe 3% increase in violent crime as well. Not as high as the year before, but nonetheless something to take note of. The support from elected officials for your local police and fire is really important. This is where I know you guys shine, as you always do, because you support the men and women who work out here in Eden Prairie. they got a tough job to do. It's not easy being a police officer day in and day out, but they work with the community because the community are them. Real simple. Madam uh, Mayor, members, I'm happy to take any questions if you wish. More not. Uh, however you want to do this. Any questions for Sheriff Stanek? Councilmember Ajo. Uh, during, uh, we had a, a, a speaker in Rotary this morning, and one of the topics that came up was um, uh, child uh, sex trafficking and, and, and um, just human trafficking in general. Do you see a rise in Hennepin County uh, in, in human trafficking uh, right now uh, in the last year or so? And if so, I mean, what kind of, what is the plan to help curb that? Yeah, Madam Mayor, members, it's a, it's a great question. What we've seen is uh, a greater awareness of human trafficking, as it may be of young boys and girls and adults uh, as well. And so I think the effort over the last couple of years has been greater awareness and services provided to them. As you know or may know, or I can provide information to you about the county's No Wrong Door plan, which is part of the overall or larger statewide plan. The Hennepin County Sheriff's Office works with the county attorney and local law enforcement agencies here in Hennepin County, whether it's the uh, hospitality industry, those hotels and uh, motels, as well as uh, you know, restaurants and bars, about what it might look like helping to educate their employees so they can be the first uh, to really call for help and work with local law enforcement. But I don't know that necessarily an increase in numbers, but rather a greater awareness. But sometimes that greater awareness results in an increase in reported crime, which mm -hmm. is just fine as well, because that's what we're trying to get at. Now, let people know what it is, what it looks like. It's much like we talk about narcotics. You know, how many parents would know what, uh, you know, a bindle of cocaine or, a, you know, some heroin or something else might look like or what's drug paraphernalia, whether they're, you know, doing the kids' laundry or they come across it maybe somewhere in the house. You know, how would you know if you've never seen it? So we help educate people about what that might look like so they can be better informed and intervene in someone's life when something's not going so well. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Well, thank you, Sheriff Stanek. It was a really good presentation. Madam Mayor, Council Members, thanks very much for having me out. I left you, uh, hopefully I left you a copy of this. This is the, uh, our annual report, as we say, from the Sheriff's Office. It's pretty detailed. Talks a lot about the numbers I talked about in here. Really good primer about what's the Sheriff's Office, what's Eden Prairie Police, what's the State Patrol, how do they all work together? At the end of the day, your residents should never really care when they call 911, whether it's the brown uniform, the dark blue, 
the maroon that provides help and assistance. Law enforcement should be seamless. That's one of my jobs as the, uh, the sheriff of this county is to help facilitate that. So it's a pleasure being with you tonight. Thank you again for that warm uh, reception. Thank, Thank you. you. The next item on the agenda is an award that the city has received. And our council and our, our management of our city has always been very uh, big proponents of innovation as a way to do things uh, more efficiently, more inexpensively, mm -hmm. and just as a way to improve the way we provide services to our community. And recently, we won an award for such an innovation. Mr. R uh, Rosso, I'm sorry, Getcho, I'm looking at <laughs> That's Rick okay. Rosso. It's all right. We're very <laughs> seldom confused for each <laughs> yeah, other. Yeah, Rick and Rick. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, as Amira mentioned, uh, we do strive for innovation and we were recognized for a local gover government in innovation award uh, recently at the end of uh, this past year. But I don't, I don't want to provide you with that detail. We have a, a great group of our employees here in our utility division to provide you with um, an overview of that award and present you with the award. So tonight we have here, um, I see four of our members of our utility division out there, Andy Allman, Isaac Razor, uh, Rick Willeen, and John Carlin. I believe John is going to be coming up and uh, presenting you and speaking uh, to you, City Council, about this recent award that we received. Uh, it was really nice to win this award. Um, we've done a lot of things over the years with the city. I've been here like 34 years. We've done a lot of things over the time, and we could have won hundreds of these things, but we finally got recognized for this. So um, it was an award we, we talked about with Gene Dietz 10 years ago. Just what are we going to do with all these ponds? How are we going to get them cleaned out? And it started with Gene and me talking, and I, I talked to all my guys. We've got to come up with a plan. How are we going to do this stuff? And uh, Isaac was out one day messing around, digging out, and he's, he's trying something. He said, we can make this muck box, and we can hook up, and Andy goes, we can hook up our vector to it. And so we, uh, we had a couple guys at the shop, uh, Tony Perrin and Will Zaff. They designed this thing, they built it, and welded it up in the wintertime. And so we went out and tried it out, and it worked phenomenal. We were able to um, walk this thing way back in, and um, fill it full of gravel and sand and, and grit from the outlets. And we had this tr sump truck 300 feet up on the road, and it just pumped it up. And when you left, walked out of there, you couldn't even tell the grass was disturbed or ruined or anything. <laughs> so we're like, wow, this is really cool. Is everybody saying patent and patent? <laughs> <Yeah. whatever. laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, so the last, uh, we did this, what, two years ago we made this? So the last couple of years, we've been working with the U of M. They do, they've been doing some stormwater training. So they've had us out doing PowerPoints, using this thing, teaching other cities and other engineers what we did, so I think it's a great idea we can share what we want and great. what we design with other people, other cities. So uh, thank you for having the time tonight to uh, watch this. Okay. The video is phenomenal. That's okay. Yeah so, so, yeah, so maybe before the mayor comes down and accepts the award, we do have a uh, short video that explains in detail uh, what John was describing. Thank you. Yeah. it rains, the stormwater runoff eventually makes its way into our storm drainage system. And as it's traveling through our network of pipes, it's picking up road debris, sediment, pot bottles, grass clippings, leaves, I mean, you name it. So we need to go in periodically and remove that sediment. Um, the problem is a lot of these stormwater ponds are in backyards, they're in residential neighborhoods. The traditional method of removing sediment from our stormwater ponds, it was, uh, it was uh, expensive, it was messy, it was involved, and that's all because it required heavy equipment. It required a large excavator, dump trucks moving in and out of the site, hauling that sediment away. When the project's over, these backyards, they look like a construction site, a war zone. A lot of homeowners are reluctant. They say, no, don't use my yard, you need to look someplace else. And at the end of the day, if we can't get an access to that stormwater pond, we're not able to clean it out. Really the main idea is, you know, we're doing this for clean water. I mean, this is the ultimate goal we have. And stormwater has, you know, just to understand the stormwater does have a real impact on the clean water. The negative consequences of not cleaning out these stormwater ponds, it's really twofold. One is it's a flooding uh, potential. The other thing is, this is the last line of defense before that stormwater is discharged into a lake and stream. So it needs to be treated to the maximum extent practical before it's discharged. 
and if it's full of sediment, it can't do that. So the idea of the vacuum dredge box was born maybe two or three years ago. The, the, the crew, the stormwater crew, and namely that's Andy Allman, Will Zaff, Tony Perrin, and Isaac Razor, they knew that we were having this problem, this roadblock, working with property owners to get to these ponds. Isaac was concerned with the damage being done to properties, and he had an idea of a way to integrate our vector. If we could come up with some sort of structure to dump the product into and have the vector suck it out instead of carrying it across people's properties. We just kind of brainstormed and came up with a, with a box idea that we could hook the hoses to. Uh, we were able to you know, buy the raw materials, cut it to what we wanted, and weld it together. How the system works is you basically scoop out sediment and water, dump it into this hopper, the material gets sucked into the, the vac truck and the heavy settle out into the bottom of the truck and we decant some of the water off that truck and kind of just repeat that process until the truck is full of material, then we uh, dispose of the material that way. Definitely less mess, definitely um, little to no damage to the yard. Quite frankly, I've been to sites where the, once the project's completed, you couldn't even tell that we were back there. That's how uh, much of the restoration and tree cutting, all of that has essentially gone away. So. You know, I would say homeowners are generally very happy with the final product. The benefits of the new system, uh, first and foremost, it's, it's cost. This saves a lot of money. We don't have the restoration. We don't have to replace sprinkler systems. We're not going back multiple times after the project, making sure that the grass is establishing itself. So there's a lot of cost savings there. And more importantly, it's a lot of time savings. If our people aren't always going back to the same project over and over, they can focus on other tasks. We have an annual two-day stormwater practices maintenance workshop, and we always ask cities and watersheds to come and share with us their experience. Uh, and the city of Eden Prairie Crew, they do a wonderful job of sharing their insights, and that's what people are after. You know, we don't want to, every city or every county to reinvent the wheel, so hopefully they can get the insight from the city of Eden Prairie and apply it in their own system, and this can hopefully can help them solve some of the issues. It's a very original idea, it's a good idea. Eden Prairie is very willing and open to listen to ideas, and if the ideas make sense, then they're willing to go forward with them, which is, is great to have. I would say the city of Eden Prairie really values innovation. It's a part of our culture. I see my role as just providing the environment for people to be innovative, to take calculated risks, and we've got a great group of talented professionals that know how to problem solve, and that's what they did here. So to maybe mention as the mayor's heading down as well is, is this was a competitive application. So you saw from the University of Minnesota Humphrey Institute that there were many, many cities, government agencies, counties, other uh, state agencies that applied and we were um, one of the top in our class. So with that does uh, come a grant as well that we're going to reinvest uh, into our utility operations, but this was a, a very competitive uh, process that we came uh, out ahead on, so we're very proud of that. Congratulations to all of you for winning this award for the city. Um, and I can't tell you how wonderful that video was. It really explained exactly what, what's going on so that non-engineers like us can understand it. <laughs> so thank you very much. And thank you for coming out on this cold night uh, to present this award to the city. Thanks. Actually, all right. warm night into a cold room, but <laughs> I think it's probably warmer outside. I don't know. <laughs> 
Okay, is there a motion for approval of the agenda and other items of business? Move approval. Second. Any items to delete or add? Question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Mo motion passes. Is there a motion for approval of the minutes from the council workshop held on Tuesday, December 6th? Move approval. Second. Any corrections to those? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Is there a motion for approval of the council meeting minutes for that same date, December 6th? Move approval. Second. Any corrections to those? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? Move approval. Second. Any items to pull for discussion? Uh, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Short meeting tonight. We do not have any public hearings. Uh, payment of claims. Is there a motion for approval? Move approval. Is there a Se second? Second. Any items to question there? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilmember Ajo? Aye. Councilmember Butcher Wickstrom? Aye. Councilmember Case? Aye. Mayor Tara Lukens? Aye. Uh, that brings us to appointments. Uh, resolution designating the official city newspaper is first. Mr. Ross. Mr. Getcho, I keep calling you Mr. Oh. Rasso, I'm sorry. I'm going to go get a law degree. <laughs> yeah, Mayor, I'll mention with all these items, um, A through um, K, is it, or A through L, these are many of our annual appointments that we do at the first meeting each and every year, from our bank depositories and official newspaper um, to the different um, city council members that serve on our various uh, organizations uh, throughout the metro area in the state of Minnesota. So these are uh, completed every year and you can see in the packet uh, each one requires its own motion and then under the synopsis it mentions uh, the individual or organization um, or entity that has been uh, designated in that place for the current year. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion? I would move to adopt the resolution designating the Eden Prairie News as the official city newspaper for the year 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion passes. The next item is a resolution designating the official meeting dates, time and place for the Eden Prairie City Council in 2017 and appointing an acting mayor. I move to adopt a uh, resolution designating the official meeting dates, time, and place for the City of Eden Prairie, for the City of Eden Prairie Council in 2017 and appointing Council Member Ron Case the acting mayor. And do we need to designate that there are some changes to that calendar following our workshop tonight? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So these would be, um, do we need to? Enunciate each of those. Yeah, I can. I can mention that okay. the two changes are uh, moving the August fifteenth meeting to August eighth, and the uh, November fifteenth meeting to November. Well, actually, let me check that one. Oh, that that would be sure. no. I have that right here. Um, the November twenty-first meeting to November fourteenth. Okay. All right. All in favor? Of, or do we get a second for that? Second. All in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Resolution appointing commissioners to the Eden Prairie Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Um, Mr. Getcho, Housing and Redevelopment Authority, do you want to say anything about that? Uh, as, I, as I mentioned previously, it would be um, appointing those uh, members to serve as the chair, executive director, and secretary. So you need to take action on that for the okay. coming year. I would uh, move to adopt the resolution appointing the city council members to serve as commissioners for the Eden Prairie Housing and Redevelopment Authority and appointing Nancy Tyra Lukens as chair, Rick Getchow as executive director, and council member Nelson as secretary for the calendar year 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. The next is a resolution appointing the director and alternate director to, to the Suburban Rate Authority. Is there a motion? Sure, I move to adopt um, the resolution designating. Robert Ellis as the director and me Rob as the alternate. Okay, Robert Ellis, director, public works director, Robert Ellis as the director. Designate, designee and the alternate director um, is Ron Case. For the suburban rate of yes. yes. Second. Sorry about that. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Next item is National League of Cities appointees. I move to approve appointment of the mayor as delegate and council members as alternates to the National League of Cities. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Appointment to the Municipal Legislative Commission. Move to approve the appointment of the mayor to the Municipal Legislative Commission. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Appointment to the Southwest Cable Commission. I move to approve appointment of Council Member Nelson to the Southwest Cable Commission. Is there a second? Second. second. All in <laughs> favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Appointment to the Eden Prairie Community Foundation. Move to approve appointment of, um, that's Kathy Nelson to- That's me. Oh, it's, oh I'm sorry. To Ron Case, sorry, Ron. Yes, to Ron Case, to the Eden Prairie Community Foundation. Second. It says in 2016, but it's 2017. It means 2017. Yeah. 2017. Okay. Yeah. Is there, uh, there Councilmember Wickstrom, you seconded it? I did. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Appointment to I-494 Corridor Commission. I move to approve the appointment of, oh wait, what's your, that's right, <laughs> Brad. Oh, oh. To the I-494 Corridor Commission. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Appointment to the City and School Facilities Use Task Force. Um, I would move to approve the appointment of Sherry Wickstrom, Butcher Wickstrom, to the City and School Facilities Use Task Force. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next, appointment of the Assistant Weed Inspector. I move to appoint Jeff Cordes as Assistant Weed Inspector for the City of Eden Prairie. Second. We probably should discuss whether we really want to remove this from Nancy, though. It's a pretty... Well, no, <laughs> it still says that I am the Chief City Weed Inspector. <laughs> all right, all right. Fair enough. Okay. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Resolution appointing municipal representatives to the Fire Relief Association Board of Trustees. That's our motion. So it's Sue Kachiever and me. Yeah. Move Jones. to adopt the resolution appointing Ron Case to the e and Sue Kachiever to the Eden Prairie Fire Relief Association. Second. Is all in favor? Aye. 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 The motion passes. Uh, the next item is a report of the city manager on board and commission recruitment. Uh, thank you, Mayor and City Council. As we we're conducting a lot of official business tonight. Another item that comes up on our agenda in the first two months of the year, actually three months of the year, is recruiting uh, for our board and commission members. We have uh, six boards and commissions at Eden Prairie with close to, if not more than 40 people um, as volunteers in the community uh, serving on those commissions. And those terms run from April to April of each year. And each commission, uh, almost, uh, if it's a full term, has a three-year term to our Planning Commission, Human Rights and Diversity Commission, Conservation Commission, Heritage Preservation Commission, Flying Cloud Airport Advisory Commission. Uh, they play a, a very big role in um, helping advise the City Council on just a variety of many different topics. In fact, uh, our next Council meeting in two weeks We'll be hearing uh, and workshop from all of our commissions on what their work plans are uh, for 2017, including a lot of their accomplishments from last year. So they do they do quite a bit of work uh, on behalf of the city. What's also important to note too is these are uh, positions that you, as a council, interview for. We take application on you interview for, and then you appoint. Um, there are many communities where there isn't necessarily an interview process. Not that it's multiple evenings or dates but but there is an interview and application process so what I'm asking tonight is that you approve the the timeline um, for this process and the application process opens on January 11th uh, next week and the application deadline would then be on February 6th the interviews would be uh, City Council interviews would occur on Tuesday February 28th for appointment on March 7th at your March 7th meeting. There would be an orientation at the end of March and then these folks would um, assume a role on our board and commissions in April. So we're very excited to begin this process again. We've had uh, luck, very good luck the last several years getting uh, many applications 
and we hope that there are many residents of our city that are interested once again in serving on one of those six commissions with a variety, um, variety of interests that are covered at the city level. So with that, I would just ask that you uh, approve that timeline and process. Okay. Is there a motion? Yes, I move to approve the attached timeline for recruitment of board and commission candidates and set February 28th as the date for commission interviews. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion passes. <clears throat> Uh, then we get into reports from directors, and we've got a report from our public works director on a subordinate funding agreement for local work construction on the Southwest LRT project. Mr. Ellis. Yes, Madam Mayor, City Council members, if you haven't heard, December 21st, the Federal Transit Administration approved the Southwest LRT project for entry into engineering. So a key step. What it really means is the project office can now finalize the plans and advertise for bids, which they will do in the next few weeks or perhaps a month or two. And uh, the next steps would be opening the bids, um, entering a full funding grant agreement, and awarding a construction project. So we're very close to actually uh, getting to a point where we're seeing earth moving for this project, which I would expect is going to be about a year from now. Um, but a key step. so. Uh, as we move into this um, advertisement phase, we've got this agreement before you tonight that talks about some of the city commitments to this project. As you know, we request a number of locally requested capital improvements, some enhancements to primarily aesthetics along the, uh, the uh, alignment. Uh, there are things like upgrading the catenary poles from the wide flange beams to a tapered, tubered, uh, tapered tubular catenary pole. Um, <laughs> also decorative street lights being installed on Eden Road. We've upgraded standardized fencing, which is generally chain link fence or post and cable fence, to the decorative, wrought iron, ornamental, sometimes painted fence. Uh, select locations, the high visibility, the, around the stations, through town center, uh, places like that. Also doing streetscape enhancements along Eden Road, uh, bridge pier aesthetics at Prairie Center Drive, Valley View, and Shady Oak Road bridges, along with some up lighting at the Prairie Center Drive bridge. Uh, which will be multicolored LED, so kind of match with our water tower. Um, also, plazas, enhancing the plazas at Southwest Station, Golden Triangle, and City West Stations. Um, and then uh, on the utility side, casings for water main, sanitary sewer, making some drainage improvement, stormwater quality improvements, and also extending the reconstruction of Technology Drive uh, near Gander Mountain, so it ties in with the full urban re. Uh, looking street. So the uh, agreement before you tonight provides our commitment to pay for those and also uh, provide two and a half million dollars to ensure that Eden Road is built as was contemplated in the design, that it would have the parking, it would have uh, plenty of right of way for streetscaping, wide sidewalks and trails, benches, things of that nature. And also that there would be no items descoped from the project out of Eden Prairie because of cost overruns. So there's a commitment that comes along with this funding commitment that they would not descope anything out of Eden Prairie. Total cost about $7 million. We have budgeted for and was approved in the 2017 through 2026 capital improvement program plan, $10.3 million. So we're well under budget. We are saving some room in there because we know we'd like to see town center station get reinstalled back into the project so we've budgeted for grant matching funds to do that and as I mentioned at workshop we're hopeful that we'll get some good news in January uh, but this is all within our capital approve, uh, capital improvement program it's been budgeted and we're uh, within that budget so uh, tonight we're just asking that you adopt or approve that agreement we could forward it to the Southwest project office and all those things can be included in the project okay thank you any questions for Mr. Ellis Okay, hearing none, is there a motion? I would move to approve subordinate funding agreement 08 for local work construction with Metropolitan Council for the Southwest Light Rail Transit Project. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion passes. That brings us to the end of the council meeting unless there is something that anybody wants to bring up for discussion. Okay, hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? <laughs> move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.